So Mill Clock didn't know I was going to do this, but I feel like having a poke around uh, inside the case and having a, a look of what's going on in there. So let's see if we can gently lever the back off and do an in-depth review on the innards. So. So let's see if we can loosen the back a bit without destroying anything. So that seems to come off quite quite nicely. Maybe I should turn this off before we continue, but never mind. So, there we see the inside. Again, do please do remember that this is a pre-production unit. It's not the finished version, it's a late prototype, and it's been provided to me so I can have a look at it. Um, now, I don't really know what's going on in here. Let's have a, a slightly closer, a closer look. So what we can see, these are probably some display drivers. There's a one, there's a K155 ID1 in there. So as we imagined, it appears that it's a two board design. There's a little bit of spacing in there. I wonder what that's, that's for. Yeah, spacing. Don't quite know what this thing is here. And maybe that's a an adjuster for the clock. So you can make it go a bit faster or slower. So as we imagined, all surface mount. The only thing which is not surface mount are the header pins here to connect to the display board and the K155 which is an old-fashioned chip and is not available as surface mount. Board design is pretty neat and tidy. Um, it says properly assembled in Ukraine. I don't quite know what that means. Does that mean? Yeah properly assembled. It's a, it's a good thing, isn't it, if it's properly assembled and not assembled badly. Um, yeah, without pushing too hard, I don't know where we can go from here. I guess I should really turn it off before continuing, just a second. So, see here it looks like I don't know whether you can see this but it looks like there's a beveling in here where the case should fit in to the back rather than onto the back but this component here I guess is going to make that um, a little bit difficult everything else well also this one this trimmer here is a little bit uh, challenging so what I guess is going on here, this is the cathode driver, the K155, and these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 transistors there. Hmm, not really sure what they're for. Seems quite neat and tidy though. I wonder if I can get it any further apart. I think it's going to be a bit of a challenge getting these switches out here. I wonder if they're genuinely long switches. You can see, probably, you can just about see the fact that the switches go all the way through down here. 
and this bit of spacing here I don't really know what that's for uh, let's let's beast it a bit let's see what we can get in there task in the world to get this apart. So let's see if I can get this piece of packing paper out here. Oh, there it is. That's very sticky glue. Okay. There's also a few blobs of glue over here. Let's see if I can loosen those a bit. Wow, that's super tough glue. Don't think this is going to come apart very easily. This is definitely n not designed to be ser serviced. doesn't want to move but it is moving. I'm a little worried about busting up the case here so maybe I won't force this on camera. So after quite a bit of struggling now we managed to get the the main board out. That's the board that has the uh, it's an Atmel chip on there. There's an IRF 740S, uh, the inductor, smoothing capacitor 220 microfarads, and there must also be a reservoir capacitor somewhere for the high voltage. I presume it's that one there. A CR2, a 1220 cell for the battery backup. Um, there's a power socket place for a power socket here but it's not mounted some switches an Atmel processor let's see what sort of Atmel that is it's very tiny let me get, get closer to it Oh, it's very hard to read. An 80 tiny 2313. Wow, didn't expect that. So, an 80 tiny. And additionally, there's going to be a real time clock chip and yeah, that's about it. So, very neat and tidy. That's quite nice. Let's see if we can get the display board out completely. It doesn't want to come because of the, the epoxy which is in there. I'll clean this up afterwards and then reassemble it, maybe with a bit less epoxy on it. Uh, it doesn't want to come out. It's going to come out. It just doesn't want to. So. Let me remove, okay, remove that epoxy and now it should just stick on the next bit of epoxy and I'll remove that as well and now it should just, da da da, drum roll, come out. 
so. Quite neat and tidy. IN 12B tubes. They've been cleaned up, there's no markings on them, there's no date. But there we go, as we imagined, a two board design. Also, this board is properly assembled in Ukraine. Let's see if I make sure I didn't destroy it. Let's have a look. Ta da! Okay, it's still working. So, a couple of two surface mount blue LEDs on the back. Good, there we go. So, quite a nice, neat, and tidy little case. There you go, you can say hello from the other side. So there we go. So I've been going over this board design in a little bit more detail. And just to say a few odds and ends about what strikes me about it. First of all, this K155 uh, ID1. It's one of the new ones. So the date on it is 1627, so 27th week of 19, uh, sorry, 2016. Um, the Atmel is an AT Tiny 2313. There's a DS1307 here with its crystal and the backup battery. And then we've got a couple of, um, well, it looks like a boost converter and a buck converter. So there's a MC34063 in a SMD package here. And that looks to be like it's running on against a 220 uh, microhenry inductor here. And a, that's presumably the boost for the high voltage. And then there's another one here. It looks like it's in buck mode. So another MC34063 with a smaller 220 microhenry inductor, which is probably stepping down the input voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts, which is needed for the control circuitry over here. And then there's a, um, a driver here, which is an IR, let me just check it again, IR4427, which is a a dual low side driver, so a dual um, MOSFET driver. So I guess what's happening is the dual MOSFET driver is being handled, is handling, well, at the very least this boost converter here, um, which is then driving a one microfarad 250 volt capacitor. And I guess that the other side is probably unused and we're just using a um, a pretty ordinary uh, buck converter over here. So an external power connector there and this then these connectors go on to the um, display board. And the display board is back in its back in its case here. I've cleaned up all the epoxy um, and in here we can see the resistors for the blue LEDs, they just go through the board and to the other side underneath the tube, the blue LEDs are running and two connectors, one side presumably for the um, cathodes and another side for the anodes. Now also this stuff on the back here that I was a little bit confused about. So I'm starting to get a little bit of an idea what's going on here. So there's two four, six, eight, ten driver circuits here. And I guess what these are doing is there's going to be four anode drivers for the four tubes and another one um, for the neon. Still don't know what this trimmer here is for. And I have no idea what that is. That looks like something that's busted. It looks like a switch that's uh, lost its top. So I don't know what's going on there. That's it. Quite a neat little board. Not very complicated and very small.